fellow horn players, I'm Jamie, J Squared Horn on Instagram and Twitter. Today's video is all about my musical journey. I've been a musician for 33 years. I started playing the flute the summer before fifth grade. Yeah, I started on the flute first, not the horn. One day, a family friend gave my mom and dad a flute that had belonged to her daughter, but she decided to quit. So they gave it to me. And I was like, what am I gonna do with this? I signed up for a summer band program. The summer band camp was at Green Run High School, which is the high school that I ended up going to, but I wasn't living in the same neighborhood. Now, <laughs> I tell you, I will never forget my beginning flute class. To this day, I can still remember that there were 16 flutes in my class. Now, like I said, this was over 30 something years ago, but I will never forget that there were 16. Why? Because I was 16th. <laughs> I was last. I was last. <laughs> Whew, I was terrible. <laughs> I sounded so bad in the beginning. It was really sad. I sounded so bad. I understood everything. I had all the fingerings right. I did it all right, but I just sounded really, really bad. And finally, one day, the teacher took my flute and he said, okay, let me take a look at this thing. And it turns out that my trill keys, if you know the two little, um, the two little pieces, the two little, little keys right up close to the end of the body of the flute, both of those were open pretty much. They were leaking really, really bad. So he had me hold it and he pushed those down and I blew out and the sound was glorious. Oh, it was so, oh, this thing sounded so good. So I moved from 16th all the way up to first. So I played the flute for the rest of elementary school in fifth and sixth grade, and then into junior high for seventh and eighth grade. Um, in seventh grade, that was when I was introduced to marching band, and that changed my life. I, uh, I totally fell in love with marching band, especially since one of my band director's friends brought in this tape of James Madison University playing the Jetsons theme song. Let me play a little bit for you right now. over that song and I said right then and there that I wanted to attend the college that played that song like that. I didn't care anything about the school. I didn't care. I was going there to be in that marching band. Throughout um, elementary school and junior high, I continued going to the summer band program and I learned different instruments. So first I learned how to play clarinet, then I learned how to play the trumpet, but I still played flute during the school year and I was really good at it. <laughs> I made second chair district band in the eighth grade, uh, right behind the girl that was first chair in my band. So we were first and second chair in band and then we were first and second chair in the district. But even with all that and with me being good on the flute and everything, I was super bored. I was super bored with the flute. I was always playing the melody, flute always plays the melody, and I wanted more of a challenge. So I decided that I wanted to switch to baritone and uh, <laughs> went to my band director, told him I wanted to switch to baritone because they had the best counter melodies in the concert band songs that we were playing. They had these parts that would soar. It was, oh, I loved hearing our baritones play. I asked my director at the, towards the end of eighth grade and we were having spring band camp, marching band camp. So he's like, sure, try out the baritone today after school at marching band practice. So that's what I did. And very quickly I decided that I did not want to switch to baritone. It was not the instrument for me. That mouthpiece was too big and the instrument was too big and clunky and it wasn't a marching baritone. Thank goodness I was able to march with the concert band baritone, but it was just weird and I did not like it. So I did not switch to baritone. Went back to the director and was like, what am I gonna do? I don't wanna play flute anymore. What should I try? And he said, hmm, French horn. So I was like, okay got it, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch to the French horn. And that's how I ended up playing the horn. But, lest he make it too easy for me, <laughs> he said that I have to come back from the summer break playing the French horn just like I played the flute or I'll have to go back to the flute, which made sense to me. We were a really, really good, good 
good programs. As a matter of fact, I have a clip. I went right back to summer band again and I learned how to play the French horn. I worked really, really hard over that summer and I came back playing the horn just about as good as I played the flute, I think. And to prove it, I went and tried out for district band again. This is ninth grade. I made second chair district band on the horn right behind the guy that played horn um, first chair in my band. So we were first and second in my band and we were first and second in the district. So I made second chair on horn in ninth grade after making second chair on the flute in eighth grade. Plus I had only been playing the horn for four months when it was time for the audition. So I was super proud of myself and um, I did what I was supposed to do. <laughs> I worked really hard and uh, got it done. So in ninth grade, I was also, not only did I switch to horn, I was also drum major of our marching band. Um, I have a few pictures. Our audition piece happened to be the Jetsons theme song. So I got to know it really, really well. Our band program at Plaza Junior High School in Virginia Beach was really, really unique for its time and some of the music that we played. We had a bunch of ragtag kids from all different places playing instruments that some of them were being held together by tape and all kinds of stuff, but we made beautiful music. And if you listen to some of the songs that we played, it was just we made some magic. So I have some links below to some of the songs that we did that you can listen and judge for yourself. Remember that these are seventh, eighth, and ninth graders, probably mostly eighth and ninth graders. So we were 12, 13, 14 years old playing grade five music. After ninth grade, I ended up going to Green Run High School. At Green Run in 10th grade, um, I was the only horn. I had another chance where I had to really step up and learn my parts because I was the only one playing them. So if I didn't play it, it didn't get played. But what really, really, really helped me was my high school band director who was also, uh, he played the trumpet, but he also played the horn. So he actually taught me how to sit right in the chair that made so that the horn could fit me better. And that turned a lot of things around. In 11th and 12th grade, I was drum major again. Um, 12th grade, I was drum major all by myself. <laughs> I would have much rather had an assistant, of course, but I think I did a pretty good job being a drum major all by myself. And it was a lot of fun. I love marching band. I love 12th grade is when you decide where you're going to college. And like I said earlier, I had already decided in seventh grade that I was going to James Madison. Now by this time, I had been to drum major camp at JMU twice. So I already knew the campus and having worked with the uh, band directors there, that just reinforced that that was the school that I was gonna go to. So that is the only school I applied to <laughs> and I got in. And 1994, I was on the campus of James Madison University in their marching band and if you would like to see a clip of me and the band that I played in, there is a tape that we made, I think it was 1996 or 97, I don't know. I will look it up after I finish recording and you can see it down below. There's a recording and you can see me. Um, I actually show up on video twice. I found myself. <laughs> and can I tell you that I was absolutely I was right about going to JMU and being part of the Marching Royal Dukes. I loved it. I had a ball. There were about 25 people in my Mellophone section. And when I was there, I think there were 300 and something people in the band, maybe 325, 350, something like that. Now, or at least in the past few years, they've gone up to over 500 at some point because everybody wants to be an MRD. Go there, <laughs> go to their camp. It's awesome. Link down below. <laughs> Being at JMU, I decided that I wanted to stay in marching band and um, just march and play my instrument since I didn't get, I only got to play mellophone in 10th grade and every other year I was drum major so I didn't get to play. So at JMU, I played the entire time and by my fourth year, I was assistant section leader of the mellophone section. It's a lot of fun and I highly recommend marching in college. It's a totally different animal than high school. It's just a whole lot of fun. At JMU, I majored first in music industry because y'all, I was gonna be the next Teddy Riley. 
<laughs> I love New Jack Swing. I was gonna move to New York and go work for Uptown Records. <laughs> um, I did not stay a music industry major. I ended up switching to uh, digital sound production so that I could do go more in depth with uh, producing and everything. So when I left JMU, I ended up getting a regular job at this company, lots of cubicles, you know how it is. Um, we, I didn't really like it, I was super bored. And I ended up finding out that my high school band director had been sick and he was out of school, had been out of school for two weeks at that time. I was considering teaching, but I wasn't sure. My mom thought I should sub. So she ended up calling the school, asking them if they had a music sub, a sub that knew anything about music. They said, no. She said, well, my daughter can get there. <laughs> that was on a Monday. By Tuesday, I was in there doing the interview. Wednesday, I had my sub orientation. And Thursday, I was at the school teaching. Friday was my first football game. <laughs> Of course, I knew nothing about the show. I knew nothing. <laughs> so the end of the school year came. I could not stay because I did not have a degree in education. So that's when I ended up at Norfolk State to finish my degree in education. And when I got to Norfolk State, I ended up working for their marching band or working with the marching band and that was a lot of fun and very different from JMU. This is my first time being with the HBCU band, a show style band when I was coming from the core style world. So it was a totally different thing at Norfolk State, but I had a blast. It was a lot of fun. I ended up being there from, oh, I was at the high school in 99 to 2000. And then I was at Norfolk State working with their band. Um, I started the school in 2000, started working with the marching band from 2001 all the way up until 2008. And so while I was there, I was the program manager for the band. I also dealt with uh, a lot of the kids coming in. I was their first point of contact because I worked in the office every day. So if you called Norfolk State from probably 2005 to 2008, you talked to me on the phone. <laughs> I also did the uh, summer band camp for high school students. I was in charge of that for a while. Um, worked with the uh, Battle Fest program that we had there. That was a lot of fun, a big uh, college marching band exhibition. Um, did all the travel arrangements and things for the band, attendance, paperwork, stuff like that. So that was a whole lot of fun. I also had a horn choir while I was there for a while. It was a lot of fun working at Norfolk State with that band. I am super glad that I was able to do that and I had that opportunity to do that. So in 2008, I left and moved to Seattle, Washington. So while I was in Seattle, I was able to play with the West Seattle Symphony and the Boeing Employee Orchestra. And that was a lot of fun. Um, that was my first time playing in an orchestra actually and transposing parts on the fly. I could transpose, but I'd actually stayed away from orchestra so that I wouldn't have to work so hard <laughs> and do that. So that was a lot of fun being in Seattle and um, playing with those two orchestras. And I'm so thankful to the other horn player that was there who let me borrow her horn because I did not own one. So without her, I would not have been able to play up there. So thank you so much. <laughs> so that brings me now to the present and why I'm here today doing these YouTube videos for you guys. I am. I work pretty much south. I'm in the Atlanta area. I'm about 30 minutes south of downtown Atlanta. And I work with school, middle schools, high schools, and a bunch of the counties around here. I teach private lessons now. And I do group horn lessons at schools. I have these YouTube videos because I cannot get to every school that I want to. I would love to be able to go everywhere but I can't, so I want to be able to uh, teach as many, many horn players as possible and make, take the, I wanna take the stigma away about horn being, that horn is too hard for people to learn. If you break it down and uh, take it step by step, and take it slowly and learn the process, it can be easy. So I wanna spread the love for the horn, help make it easier for the kids to learn the right way because I end up fixing a lot of problems and I wanna be able to start the horns correctly. I started this YouTube channel so that I could reach kids that I can't get to, so I can reinforce what I teach to the students that I only get to see once a week so that you can remember what I'm talking about so that everyone can be the best horn player that they can be. 
So if you're still here, <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for helping me to spread the love of the horn. Please subscribe so you can see my next video. And if you like this, give me a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any video suggestions. I will definitely try to make a video to help answer your questions or if I can just answer your question down below, I'll do the best I can. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I will see you next time, goodbye. Now go practice. <laughs> <laughs>